So the thing that makes mobile mobile is not just what you can do on your phone, but how does your phone interact with the greater internet? So in order to actually write code that does that, we need to go over some basics first. So we have a client and server architecture for almost everything that goes over the web. The type of protocol that we use on the web is HTTP. All it is is you make a request with a particular type and then you get a response for that particular request. In this case, the top one we see here is a GET request. This is the most common for, hey, I just need some data back. Below this, we have a POST request. This is, and you can see here, a login. So sometimes you want to actually make a request where you actually want to send data to the server. Everything is broken down into this request and response architecture. Think of these little chunks of HTTP data as being like an actual piece of mail. You have a return address, which is your client, or mobile phone, or even your computer, and then you actually have a destination. So for instance, here we're sending a request to google.com, 80th floor. We'll get more into that metaphor in a second. But let's look at what it looks like to the computer. Inside each HTTP request, you have two main sections. You have the headers, and then you have the body. The headers are really what kind of stores metadata that goes along with this. So in this case, you can see that we have a GET request. We actually see which version of the HTTP protocol we're using. And it's just a section of key value pairs detailing things that we might need for this particular request. Each key value pair is divided up with a single colon besides the actual GET at the top. Now in this case, we're actually just asking for some data, so there's nothing in the body. But if we wanted to send data, for instance, maybe we've updated something we want to send or we want to log into something, that's where you'd store that data, which is in the body. This thing is really easy to debug and troubleshoot, and it's one of the reasons why web has gotten so popular, because everything isn't binary or ones and zeros, it's actually just plain text. So whenever you actually want to debug something, you can just look at the raw data and make sense of it. So, let's go back to our piece of mail metaphor. What it actually looks like to the computer is a little bit more like this. We have a return address, but it's of an IP address. And we also have a actual destination IP address, and we also have a port. So, you can think of everything that you're dealing with in the web as kind of being like a series of buildings. Each building has an address. Instead of actually having a street number and name, they just have these numbers separated by four particular numbers on a scale of 0 to 255. Each of these represents a different server or location it needs to go to, whether or not it's physical or virtual. Well, what about that port thing? Well, if you think about each building as having different particular floors that need to process different information, you might have a group that is just there to deal with instant messaging communication, or uh, maybe another one that is just there to see whether or not that building exists. Well, port 80 is a very special port because it's the port that we use for all HTTP requests. So whenever you make a request, it goes out and will actually go to the server on that particular port. You can change these ports around, but for almost all web service type APIs we will be dealing with, we're going to be doing it over port 80. Other protocols do have other ports that we might run into. HTTPS is a very common port. That's a secure way of sending the same type of data. And that's on floor or port 443. What's important is not necessarily to memorize every single protocol in its port. You can always look that up. But just to appreciate that different protocols go to different locations. So once you actually send that, what you're going to get back is an actual response message. Now the response message looks very similar. It's going to have the same kind of destination and return address specification that we did for a request. Only this piece of mail is sent to you. But it looks very similar. As you can see here, we have at the very top HTTP, the protocol again. We have a status code this time that says 200, OK. That means that our request was actually fulfilled and it's coming back and everything's hunky-dory. We also have a bunch of other things here, such as maybe the length, what the actual type of the content is, still separated as key value pairs inside the headers. Now the body, in this case since we're asking for data, is going to be the actual website of www.google.com. Obviously it's a lot more complicated than this, but as you can see that headers and body are separated from metadata and then what we actually want to know and see. 
Another metaphor that might help you as you're moving forward with these types of APIs that are available on the network and elsewhere on the web is to see the correlation between Java method signatures and web method signatures. You see, with Java, we have an actual name of a particular method. Just like when we're on the web, we have particular names of URLs that we want to go to. And also on the web, you'll often see these endpoints store particular parameters, like string Q and string IE, here in a way that's a little different, but still the same. We're still passing method back and forth and getting a return. So as you're going through API docs, in addition to what you're going through with our course, just remember these things when you're trying to figure out how an API works. You're still making a request for something and getting something back.